is Ashley Chair. I'm the founder and CEO of Chair Love Fund. We're going to continue our discussion of teaching methodologies for elementary school. And let's talk about physical education. So in physical education in this age group, children are learning about basic body maintenance. They're learning about deep breathing, drinking enough water, having nutrition, getting sleep to heal and grow. They're learning about cleanliness and exercise. In addition, um, children are um, celebrating their own gifts. You know, maybe somebody is a fast runner, but maybe somebody else um, can be really strong holding a pose, or maybe someone else um, loves to cheer the others on. You know, everybody has something to offer, and it's just, um, you know, maybe somebody um, has a lot of stamina, so they don't wanna run, but, um, but they can walk for a very long time. And um, just trying to um, meet the children where they are and um, give them something good to feel good about that they can build on. And it's about setting personal goals and trying to get this age group away from being competitive into um, trying to be the best version of themselves and just trying to um, beat whatever personal record they had last time if they climbed a little bit of a rope, for example, maybe the next time they can climb a little bit higher. Doesn't matter if somebody else got to the top, what matters is that they are continuing to improve. Um, this is one thing that I always tell kids is, um, the way you get stronger is by pushing yourself to do a little more than you did yesterday. So sometimes when they look at the child, let's say, can climb to the ceiling on the rope, I remind them, I said, okay, well, if a child can climb to the ceiling on the rope and that was easy for them, then doing it is not necessarily building muscle. Then they need to do something else. Like if I can hold a plank for two minutes easily, then me holding a two minute plank is not building muscle. If I can hold a two minute plank easily, then I should be trying for a four minute plank. So. I tell the kids um, to really develop muscle and challenge yourself. Um, you always have to do something else. Like nobody's finished. Um, even the best athlete in the world, just because they've accomplished a goal doesn't mean that they don't need to exercise anymore. Um, the best athlete in the world actually has to do more exercise to get their heart rate up than um, someone completely out of shape to get to that same heart rate level. So um, I try to explain this concept that um, yoga is a journey and life is a journey and um, it doesn't really matter where you are. Nobody's done. People have to continually challenge themselves. And so I think that um, when children realize that there is no finish line, then um, then they start to let go of, um, of, oh, someone can do that better. This is a time to develop um, physical skills that are age appropriate. There's certain milestones, riding a bicycle, things like that. Um, this is an age where children are very competitive, so trying to create play that's not competitive and yoga is a great um, exercise is not competitive in the sense that you're on your own individual mat and um, it's really between yourself and if you um, explain about injury to the children then um, hopefully they'll understand it's really a race to nowhere. Um, if somebody's doing the splits and you can't do the splits, trying too much is just going to get you an injury. So what's the point of that? So, um, you know, listening to your body and trying to make that connection between body awareness and also trying to empower the children to be decision makers um, to decide what's actually serving them and what could be dangerous or a disservice. And um, this is also a time to talk about a safe zone and setting limits and having the children um, sort of be aware and try to um, try to start having the skills to regulate themselves a little bit. Um, you know, let's, um, 
you know, when you get a little tight, if we're playing um, freeze tag, for example, if you get a little tired, you know, sit down, maybe um, giving a word uh, for break or something like this so um, the children can learn to self-regulate a little bit. So in this age group, um, there's a game called Tricky Tree, and um, it's like tree pose um, with a partner. Tree pose with a partner is, um, you know, like one person, um, sorry, I'm a little stiff, but like one person standing doing tree, and then on the other side, the other person standing and doing tree, um, you know, side to side. Um, so Tricky Tree Pose can be a lot of fun. So basically, um, it's hard to do because I don't, um, I don't have a buddy, but basically instead of me standing and doing tree like this, I would put um, this leg, this foot on someone else's leg. So imagine that this is a leg. And then the other person, so now I'm the other person, um, the other person puts, instead of them putting their foot here, they put their foot here. So um, feeling that connection, the two soles of the feet, it's a little ticklish, and that's why it's a little bit of a tricky tree, and the kids can get a little wobbly, and um, balancing really improves focus and concentration, and it also works a lot of different muscles, uh, the stabilizer muscles, and it's working well with a partner. You know, one um, child may blame another child for why they fell over, or this or that, and, um, you know, teaching that um, not to blame others, not saying it wasn't anyone else's fault, but, um, but there's more constructive ways to improve ourselves than to focus on who did what, and, um, and instead just focus on the task at hand. Thank you for your time.